the Vatry Airport, an isolated former military base located east of Paris, is the perfect research and development site for rocket engines. Okay, je vais faire une PDU ici. Allez. Engineers here are testing catalyzers. Everything went well. We'll go through the data and then we'll probably do a second test tomorrow. After a few modifications to this former NATO base, this startup is able to test its small satellite micro launchers. Over there, we'll be testing the upper floors. We'll put our spaceport between the two hangars, so our launch table with the installations. Latitude initially planned to test their engines in the far north of Scotland, but chose to go to Vatry instead, saving time and money. The end-all be-all in the space industry, as private companies join the race. Essentially, it's the Silicon Valley mentality of entrepreneurs who arrive with funding and their innovation. They innovate quickly, test, destroy, start again. They have private funding and a propensity for risk that may be much higher than what we've seen in the past. Fifteen years ago, NASA opened its doors to the private sector to cut costs and boost innovation. And since then, companies like SpaceX have stepped in with their reusable rocket launchers. The European Space Agency is now following their jet stream. It was absolutely necessary because of the current situation we're in, but also because I believe it's a huge opportunity for the European Space Agency to be more innovative and dynamic and to reach new players and therefore new fields. At Latitude's headquarters in Rance, the 19-meter Zephyr launcher greets visitors. And the 3D-printed Navier engine is the latest tech innovation. 3D printing enables us to manufacture complex shapes, like the ISO grid shown here. It comes out like this, as you can see here. We're able to produce much more complex shapes and increase the number of trials and to reduce manufacturing time and costs because we use much less material. The startup has raised close to 50 million euros, more than a quarter of the budget needed for their first launch. Engineers are wary of any information leaks that could give their competitors the slightest advantage. The slightest piece of information we can give about the technological choices we're going to make, however insignificant they may seem, could save competitors months of development time. Experts forecast that some 28,000 satellites will be launched over the next decade. The ESA estimates that out of the handful of European companies developing micro-launchers, only two or three will survive. Latitude is trying to beat those odds. We're going to make it possible to efficiently carry out dedicated flights for satellites that are going to be 10 to 20 kilograms and therefore between the size of a shoebox and the size of a washing machine at an affordable price. Their first launch is expected in 2025. Europe aims to diversify its range of rockets, which are currently too big to launch small satellites. But this is only the start of the commercial space race. I think there are even more interesting areas, like the development of space services, for example, for energy, access to resources, development and health. Now there's not a single area of space that doesn't have a commercial aspect. With technological improvements, scaling down and cutting costs, skills and expertise applied here on Earth can transfer over to space. Here, the Venturi car maker is making batteries for its lunar rover. The idea is to take automotive know-how, to take these components and repurpose them for space. Why? To save time and cut costs. In 2000, Gilles de Pasteur, a wealthy Monegasque businessman, bought the car maker. His idea is to go all electric. Without outside funding, Venturi launched prototype cars, motorcycles, a polar exploration vehicle, and even a lunar rover. The strategy? Anticipate demand and create need. We're ahead of the game. We're already preparing a rover to submit to the ESA, so we can make proposals instead of waiting for them to issue an official call for tenders. The Flex lunar rover has already been pre-selected for NASA's Artemis missions. 
With its American and Swiss partners, Venturi can position itself on both sides of the Atlantic, even bypassing public agencies. SpaceX will send the Venturi rover to the moon in 2026. The vehicle can carry 1.5 metric tons all at once. To deploy one kilogram to the moon today costs around $1.3 million. We can get down to $250,000 per kilo. Our prices are very competitive. So by completely filling the rover's payload, we generate substantial profits. With roughly $6 billion invested in 2023, space is certainly the industry of the future. But new private players still depend on public agencies to get their deals off the ground, because beyond the financial aspect, space is still a matter of national sovereignty.